Hey, how's everybody doing? Kai here, back for another video. So, uh, today I'm gonna be doing a lather technique from Doug Bear or uh, Barely Normal Shaving on YouTube. Uh, so he does this thing where he uses froth from the soap. So he takes his lid, fills it with water, like I am doing here. So, water in the lid. Then I'm going to dump it onto my soap and close it up. So there we go, you can kind of see the water in there. And then you're just gonna shake. And then uh, you use the froth from the shaking in order to make your lather. So. Maybe a little bit longer. Get some coffee. That's just what, that's just the way we talk in the clean <laughs> prison mic. Oh, The Office is so great if you haven't watched it. But, okay. So, I think that should be good. So now I'm gonna turn it over and then I'm gonna open this up. So there we go. So I got all that froth on here and then I got a little bit of excess on the tub. So the uh, brush that I'm going to be using today is my turn and shave envy and uh it has a 26 or 28 millimeter um two band silver tip in it so just gonna give this a couple swirls for five okay that should be good I'm trying to get all the the excess foam off the top. Doug also did this with Kaizen, which I feel is like a little bit of a cheat because Kaizen is just too good. But I'm gonna paint this on. It's looking pretty good actually. Yeah, Adagio. So nice. It's one of those scents that I hope Will will bring back eventually, although I don't think it'll happen. He's into a little bit more of like perfumery and uh, going more towards scents that I feel like he can make into colognes and not that this wouldn't make a nice cologne, but I don't think it's just the, the style of scent that he wants to do anymore. But that's why this tub rarely sees the light of day. So I'm just dipping it into the, uh, the froth right now adding some it's almost kind of like bloom water yeah this is making a very nice lather actually so i'd be curious to see like how much soap this kind of saves. So, um, Doug's a little bit better at it than I am, but what would be cool to see is maybe do a traditional 
soap load or well, weigh the weigh the puck and then do a traditional load and see how much that changes and then use this method and see how much the weight changes He didn't develop this method to uh, save on soap, but I feel like it really does save on soap, so. For those of us who aren't always trying to kill soap, I am not one of them. I'm trying to work through all my stuff, but um, for those who are, you know, trying to conserve their soap, this could be a good method for you. So I'm just rinsing off my puck right now. But, uh, okay. So as far as razors go, I've got a few today. Um, the matching razor to go with the brush. I have my weight and butcher. So this is an 8.8. I'm not really too sure what that grind is. Kind of looks almost like a half hollow, but it also doesn't at the same time. So I'm not too sure what to call it, um, but this is a uh, for barber's use, weight and butcher, um, with scales done by Max. So I just honed this uh, last night, and then I've got three more razors which I've also honed for my buddy uh, Raymond. So I'm gonna be testing out some edges. So hopefully, I don't need to ask Annette to grab me a different razor. I might. But anyway, get started. Feels pretty good. So my puck to maximize on space <laughs> so uh, I'm not too sure what this is uh, the American Razor Figaro this is one of his blades so And then these two are actually uh, blades that I picked to him, funny enough. So these have been on the channel. If you've been a subscriber for a fairly long time, um, there's a chance you may recognize these. This is going to be a Joseph Allen. I think this is a razor that, uh, I can't really see it anymore, but I used to have a scar right on my jawline. And I think this is the razor that gave it to me. Yeah. The leather that I got from this is really interesting. It's a little bit more, um, more high structure considering I'm using Barrister and Man. This is in the, oh, glissant base. I almost forgot what it was called. Oh, I forgot to show the razor. This is, this razor is the bane of my existence. Um, I don't know how much I've talked about it before, but this is a Dovo Bismarck. Um, when I first got this thing, it was just totally warped, you know, um, <laughs> like it, it was just so wobbly and, uh, and it just wouldn't, wouldn't sit flat. So, um, I can show it here in a second, but I had to put just an insane 
amount of cone wear on it in order to try and get it to sit flat. Um, let me see which side is worse. Uh, they're both pretty bad to be honest. Um, he said he hadn't taken it out of the box for a while, so there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of rust going on. It's not on the edge, but it's fine. But there we go, right along the spine. You can see all that homeware that I had to put on this thing. So yeah, this was that that blade is like one of my. It's not really like a white whale type of deal, but it almost is where I just could never get the edge right on that. Kind of feels like I did today, but yeah, that, that razor has been the absolute just bane of my existence. Yeah, one thing I will say with this, um, with this froth technique too, is you kind of have to watch how much water you put in your lid. Um, you do want a little bit of, of shaking room. You know, you don't want to completely fill the lid all the way to the top. Um, I tried it out uh, once before off camera, you know, just to, just to try and get the, to see what it, how it works. And, um, I filled my lid up to the top and also maybe Barrister and Man lids have a, have a larger amount of space. So that might play into it as well. But when I finished, um, because I think I didn't leave myself enough room to, to shake and agitate, I, uh, I really just had a lot of just foam and, uh, you know, it, it really didn't build up to anything that looked like this. So just, if you do decide to try it, just watch how much water you add to your lid. Maybe about halfway to three quarters works pretty well, I think, just so you had that room to agitate the soap. Yeah, you know, to save my life, I'm having trouble with this. Uh, Wayne and Butcher. I don't know why. So, I'm gonna put this thing aside for now. I have been considering selling that razor. So if you're interested in Wade and Butcher, um, leave me a comment down below and maybe leave me your, your email as well. Or if we're, you know, if you follow me on Instagram or anything, just send me a message. But if you don't, yeah, just shoot me an email or something. Um, or I'll shoot you an email. But uh, yeah, I think I'm probably gonna put it up for sale. Yeah, it wasn't really doing anything. I tried to put an edge on that thing about four, five times. And that feels pretty good. So I'm going to make sure I use this on my neck next time on the next pass I mean this is doing really well yeah that's nice
Yeah, so those two blades did good on my cheeks. Really good on my neck. It's just that one's like a great edge. So. Yeah, that's nice. And now the moment of truth. We'll see how this thing came out. Pretty nice. So I'm actually just gonna do half of my neck with this. And then I'm gonna do... Oh, okay. I'm gonna do the other half with the American. And then I think I'm just gonna finish out the shave with the Joseph Allen, just cause Nice too. Okay. All right, Ray. Your razors are ready, man. So I'm just gonna finish with the Joseph Allen. I'm not gonna strop it. Um, just because, like, I haven't really used the edge enough, you know, to probably warrant that. Okay, let's just see what adding a little bit of this frothy water does to us at this point. Yeah, these Shave Mac, these Shave Mac knots have some really nice flow through. Very soft tips too. It's not, it's not a jelly knot, but it is a very, very good performing knot. So here we go. Just gonna finish up with the Joseph Allen, like I said. This is a really nice razor. I think it's about like maybe a six eighths or maybe a eleven sixteenths. So I'm just a hair away from six eighths, but. Yeah, that's a great, great feel. Yeah, biggest thing when you're doing the chin, make sure you're rolling to follow that, uh, to follow that curve. My only, my only real gripe with this razor is the, uh, the length of the tail. Um, if you've watched me shave with my other spreckers, you know like the tails on my razors are always a little bit longer and it's because I like to get a nice foothold. So what I do is I put my ring finger on top and I tuck my pinky under the bottom. So like that, it's a little bit hard with this razor because the tail is so short. But um, it just gives me a nice, secure feeling. 
on the razor. And it makes it just really easy to grip. Like I don't really have to think about it too much. But yeah, this blade is definitely good to go. Yeah, very nice. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, uh, I'm gonna rinse off and put on aftershave, but uh, yeah, just wanted to say, so like I said, this thing will be for sale. Um, not that I don't like it, it's just kind of giving me trouble. And uh, I'm going to school, so I do wanna sell like some of my stuff in order to make some money for, um, for tuition. So yeah, that's about it for me. Uh, let me just rinse off real quick and then put off my aftershave. So I don't have the matching splash. Um, by the time I was getting a Daggio, I think it was like well into its lifetime like of being sold. So the splashes were pretty much all sold out, but uh, I use this combination um, that Anthony Esposito, the stallion uses. Um, you know, you don't, I don't really need to say too much about him. He's pretty much a, a straight razor legend and uh, he's pretty much who I took inspiration from when I first started shaving uh, straight razor shaving at least but I'm using alt 11 this is the um, Phoenix artisan accoutrements version um, I mostly got it because when I first started uh, this was cheaper than alt Innsbruck and that's what he uses um, that's what Anthony uses but I'm going with this one, and it's really nice. It's got a nice uh, floral, like tobacco flower, and a uh, nice menthol sensation. So, really nice aftershave overall. Yeah, very good. And then I do like the PA aftershaves. Um, all feel good on the skin. And then it's cold. But anyway, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, so this method, pretty cool with the uh, with the froth. As you can see, I still got quite a bit left over, and still got a bit of lather left over in the brush. I kind of want to ask Doug on like if he gets something a little bit more foamy when he does it with other soaps, not Kaizen, because Kaizen is like the densest soap available but yeah that stuff is insane i know this isn't a kaizen video but if you if you want to get another soap get kaizen that stuff is probably the the number one base on the market right now but uh yeah that's it for me thank you guys for watching hope to catch you in the next one hope you enjoyed see ya